This is the Olympus 30mm macro lens. So while this lens is 30mm, we have the equivalent frame of view as 60mm full frame. The most this lens opens up to is f3.5, so that's the equivalent in depth of field to f7 on full frame. So that doesn't sound like you're going to get much shallow depth of field. But when you consider one of the most important things for depth of field is the distance between your lens and the subject, this lens lets you get really close to a subject. What makes this better than using extension tubes or reversal ring is that it also is a fully functional prime lens besides that. Here's a picture I took of Crow Patrick using this lens just as a lens and it looks absolutely fine and then a few minutes later I took this picture of the grass just all close up. So it's pretty versatile as opposed to if you were using extension tubes you'd have to like clip them on for that shot and then clip them off for the mountain shot or just pack an extra lens. And also have you ever shot with extension tubes? Because they take a setup that's, you know, if the lens is on this body, to like this. <laughs> they add a lot of distance and it adds a lot of bulk to your camera. So let's talk about build quality. It's plastic. There's no easy way to say that, uh, but it doesn't feel cheap. If you tap it, it doesn't feel hollow and like really cheap and plasticky. You know what I mean? We have a metal lens mount, which is always nice to see. And the front element is tiny, <laughs> which uh, does look a bit weird, but um, it gets the job done. We have a focusing ring. Uh, which is all electronic because that you know mirrorless and one thing I really like and I know like the aesthetics of the lens itself aren't super important to how it performs but if a lens looks cool it means you're more likely to use it which means your pictures are going to be better. We have this lovely silver ring that goes around the lens with the blue circle with like with the Mzuko branding. Size wise this lens is about the same size as my 25mm prime that I'm filming this on at the moment. It's pretty much exactly the same height as my EM5 and just for a bit of a laugh here it is next to the smallest lens I own. <laughs> if you want a review of this setup, uh, click the card here. My only issue with the build quality of this lens is it's not weather sealed, which you shouldn't really expect at this price. So I paid 150 euro for this on MPB in like new condition. It still even has a little peel on that. I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, and it even came with the box. So like, it's a like new lens to me and I can't see any marks on it. So big thanks to MPB. Definitely didn't sponsor this video. Uh, I just buy way too much stuff from them. So for the price, you shouldn't really expect weather sealing but I would really like that in a macro lens just so if it has recently rained, I don't have to worry about maybe getting it on some damp moss or something like that. The big brother to this lens, the 60 millimeter macro is weather sealed as far as I know. The image quality, how is it? In a word, good. But I'm gonna put up some sample images now of like just some stuff from around the garden, some images I've taken with this as an actual like lens lens, not a macro lens and even a few things just really close up here at my desk. I definitely wouldn't shoot this wide open if you're able. Um, I would pair this with either a flash or I'd like a ring light here in the corner. If I was taking a picture of something on the desk, I'd probably have that there so I could stop down a bit. But if you're shooting on a tripod, that's not really an issue anyway. I just kind of don't like using a tripod because the whole point of micro four thirds to me is nice small stuff like can fit in a tiny bag and run out the door. Autofocus. It's pretty snappy, but what a lot of macro lenses have that this doesn't is like a focus limit switch. I think that's the term for it. Where you can set it to only focus from like here to here from macro photography or from like here to infinity. This lens doesn't have that. It'll focus from like here to infinity. So you have more possibilities when focusing. So sometimes if you're going to take a shot and you don't manually set your focus point, it will just focus on what's closest. And if you want to manually focus, we have a focus ring here that feels really smooth. It feels like using a fluid head on a tripod where you can like, it's like it's slowing itself when you spin, but it's not grainy. A small problem with this lens is that it only is a 60 mil equivalent, right? Which means that if you want to get super close to a subject, you do have to get physically quite close which if you're shooting pictures of insects or animals or anything that's kind of prone to getting scared away, which is pretty much just insects and animals, you're going to have to get a bit too close for that to work. Um, so there's ways of doing this and like, I think it's the early morning where it's a bit colder, apparently insects move slower, so you can get close to them that way. But for a little budget intro to macro lens, you know, that's not really a concern for me. Where does this lens fit into my workflow? Well, those of you that saw my review of this, the cheapest Micro Four Thirds setup, uh, I filmed some B-roll with this by literally just sticking this on my main camera, putting the, 
thing I was shooting on a desk and just using the fluid head of the tripod to move real slowly. So for actually when filming reviews of stuff, uh, this will come in very handy for getting close-up shots. Uh, and just for macro photography, I mean this thing is tiny. Here it is on my EM5. It looks nice and it doesn't add any more bulk than if I was shooting with let's say my 25mm f1.7. So who is this lens for? I don't think this is for professional macro shooters, right? If you're like a photographer for an insect magazine. Are there insect magazines? This is probably insect magazines. Uh, you probably already have a really nice macro setup with like a ring flash at the front of the lens. Uh, something that I do when I'm shooting this, I actually use the tiny little flash that my EM5 came with. As for like an everyday lens, I think 30 millimeters for me is a bit too tight. I kind of prefer 25 mil or 20 mil, and then I can recompose by cropping if I really have to. But the option for close-up photography is really cool. For me, like I said, is that hailstone? Okay, it's hailstone right now. I guess I'm going to go out and take pictures of hailstone when it stops. Uh, but for me, this lens is going to be a big part of the YouTube channel for kind of filming B-roll and that kind of stuff. And I just really love macro photography. But I feel as well, macro photography to me is a bit like drone photography in that you kind of have that gimmick aspect of it. Any picture taken from a drone looks cool because it's taken from a perspective you don't usually see. I feel like macro photography is a bit like that as well. Um, and you're taking pictures more of things than of a scene. That's just macro photography in general and those are my very unqualified views on it. What do you think? Uh, would you treat yourself to a little macro lens or would you rather just get some extension tubes? Would you like to see a comparison of this lens versus some micro four thirds extension tubes? That could be something I might try down the line so if that's something that appeals to you let me know. As always if you like the images you see in this video I have my Instagram link down below. If you like the edits I did I'm gonna have my presets available at some point and if you like this kind of content, then subscribe. I know I said in my plans for 2024 that this was going to be the next video, but I felt I had to go out and shoot a bit more with this lens just to get a better feel for it and a better idea about it. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for watching. Cheers.